So as a nephrologist, you have probably come across polycystic kidney disease in your practice. Um, do you use fasting in these patients? Um, I do recommend it, but it's difficult because if you look at polycystic kidney disease, first of all, the specific gene defect is known. It's in the polycystic gene. So it's a genetic defect. So somebody, I, I see a lot of polycystic kidney disease actually. Uh, so people develop all these cysts and eventually the cysts sort of crowd out the normal kidney. They get these giant cystic kidneys and then they, their kidneys fail because the normal kidney is sort of smooshed. Okay. So the problem is that the gene defect is polycystin. It's something they've had from birth, and then they go on to dialysis in average, say, 50 to 60 is, is sort of an average age. So if you try and treat the disease, the problem is that it's such a slow-moving disease. So if you treat them at age 40, they've had 40 years of polycystic kidney disease, um, and so to do a year or two or three of fasting, is it going to make any difference? It's really hard to know. So there's no human data. Uh, there is rat data because you can do much faster stuff much faster with rats. And the data in the rats is so good. The problem is you don't know if that is going to translate. So in rats, you can actually completely stop the progression of these cystic kidneys. It's, it's amazing. Wow. So, and the reason is that when you fast, you really turn down all your growth um, signals. signals because your nutrient sensors, of which there's three, um, all get turned way down. So your body says, oh, there's no food coming in. I need to stop everything from growing. And the fastest growing cells in the body are the cysts. Uh, that's what's abnormal. So even though you're not correcting the gene defect in polycystin 1 or polycystin 2, you're turning down the growth signals enough in those rat models that you can actually stop the progression of kidney disease. But does that work in humans? And how long do you need to fast? Right. And nobody knows. Nobody has any answers to that. So, and the problem is the answers may come in sort of 15, 20 years. So, it's a total guess. If you if you're to look at rats, and rats are different because their metabolic rates are higher, therefore, when you fast them for 24 hours, that doesn't necessarily translate to a human fast of 24 hours. It may be closer to like five days or right. thing. Um, do we need to fast them that long, and how often? And you know, nobody knows the answers to that. So I tell people that they should probably do some fasting. Um, you know, but I don't know what the best timing is and I don't know if it will actually work or not. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's really a very difficult uh, question to answer but the thing is that if there is a benefit, so I, I often tell people, so what I like to tell people is that they should do <coughs> sort of on a regular basis a couple times a week the shorter fast and I usually say 24 to 32 hours water only because you really want that sort of pure fast because you're turning down the growth signals and you don't want any of those other things. Um, and then every quarter or so to do a longer fast. That covers both bases because if you're getting the benefits from the shorter fast, then you'll get that. And if you're getting the longer fast, you're gonna get that. So you yeah. wanna do both. Um, and, it's a, and it's something that I don't know if it will have any benefits in the long term. In right? rats it works, but it doesn't necessarily, that may or may not translate into humans. Um, so it's, 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 but on the other hand, the treatment is free um, and the alternative is that if in 20 years you find out that it actually worked, well, you're on dialysis by now. So it's right. like, why yeah. wouldn't you do it? So, yeah, yeah. you know, again, in clinical medicine, we talk about what are the risks, what are the benefits. Risks, not much, unless you're malnourished. Not a huge amount of risk. It's right. not fun, but it's not risky. <laughs> um, benefits, potentially a lot of benefits, but yeah. unknown. So. I always give people the option. I say, look, you can do it if you want, but dialysis is no fun, and if this actually works, you know, we're not gonna know about it for a long time, so therefore it's up to you whether you want to do it or not. Um, I, think it, it, I think it probably would work, but you can't tell because you have to actually follow these people for five or 10 years yeah. because the disease moves so slowly that you're actually not gonna see any change, right. um, good or bad. In five yeah. years, yeah. Like, you know, I follow these people for sort of decades, uh, and they'll progress extremely slowly. But that's the disease; it mm -hmm. takes fifty or sixty or seventy years to manifest. And 
other than fasting, what other alternatives are there for immediate use? Uh, there's there's um, two things. So one is uh, a medication called um, Tolvaptan, and it's a cyclic AMP inhibitor. And it's just one of the things uh, that they've discovered turns off some of the cyst growth. The problem is that you wind up peeing a lot. So a normal person will drink about a liter of fluid a day, a liter, a liter and a half a day. These people drink about five liters a day um, because they basically pee it all out so they get thirsty and keep wow. drinking all out. So you can actually get much of the same benefit if you simply drink a lot of water. But when we're talking a lot, it's like a lot, sort of like three, four, or five times what a normal person would drink. So I tell people, one, you can try the fasting, and two, you can drink a lot of water. And that avoids them having to take the medication. Mm -hmm. But the problem is it's hard to force yourself with the medication. You pee it all out, so you're thirsty, so you're, you are going to drink that. Right. Without the medication, you're not going to want to drink that much water. It's a lot of water. Yeah. You're peeing like every 15 minutes. But it's a lot. How do people live their lives? <laughs> that's crazy. People do. People do. But that's been the big problem is that that is the only treatment that's currently available. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been proven to slow down the, the, the cyst uh, size. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I always think somebody needs to study this for fasting because if it is available, then it's, it's probably highly preferable. But in truth, you could use both. You could do both the drugs and the fasting. They should be added.